All right, guys, um, welcome to the video. This is CNM Vending Solutions. Uh, well, Cody from CNM Vending Solutions. So I'm doing this video um, because a lot of people online have said this isn't possible, um, at least without spending a ton of money. So I'm gonna show you a uh, part in the series of how to configure a single price old school um, vending machine to be able to accept a card reader without um, rebuilding it or anything crazy like that and uh, this is just a little proof of concept video so uh, we'll get into the details a little bit in uh, other parts of the video so the only thing you have to really buy aside from the card reader um, is this relay well so this relay uh, you can configure the card reader for either, either the uh, MDB interface, which is with the newer vending machines we use, and that's super simple, uh, just plug and play, and actually that's the original cable I had, um, or you can use these on um, what they call the pulse interface, so you could attach these to uh, an arcade machine, uh, a car vacuum, or whatever, pretty much most machines, you know, coin-operated washers and dryers at a laundromat, um, this can still work for that, and it's called the pulse interface, and it works a little bit differently. Um, it's not as seamless, but it is. it will work. So I'm going to show you what we're going to put in our old single-price uh, Dixie Narco drink machine. So what we have here is we have the NIAX uh, VPOS Touch. It is not configured with the normal interface, so I have changed the attributes and I will show everyone how to do that so that it's basically you you set one price per credit so to speak and what's going to happen is when that credit uh, is purchased it sends a signal to this thing um, which this is just a relay this thing cost five dollars on Amazon I wired it up and what we're going to have this thing do is you see a lot of people on YouTube and the internet kind of uh, they're creating um, free vend buttons on these single price machines. Basically, when you press a button, it triggers the vend relay in the single price machine. So it tricks it into thinking that the single price, whatever that may be, has been met. So it'll just vend. You know, people set it up to the change return button. They'll set it up to an empty button on the single price machine whatever so what this is going to do once somebody purchases a credit which i have set as a dollar it's going to send a signal to this and i'm going to have instead of a button like a free vend button where people would normally press a button and then it tells the machine that uh, okay the credit's been reached i'm going to vend um, we're just going to put this in its place so what's going to happen is this is going to simulate a button push so to speak whenever somebody pays a dollar so it will trigger the machine to allow one vend per credit and i have the credit set to one dollar now it's obviously a little bit more complicated than that but that's the gist and i'm going to make a video um to show how we do it but this is just going to demonstrate so basically this sends a little pulse to this you're going to see a light flash when it sends it and that essentially will connect the connection, say, similar to pushing a button. So we're just going to demonstrate it right here. So this is the NIAX card that we get. Authorizing. There we go. We're going to watch. So the light flash, and you hear a click, which means that that relay closed. And if we had wires connected to this side, it would have completed that connection as if somebody had pushed a button. So we're just gonna basically hook up a few wires. Anytime someone pays a dollar, it will trigger the machine to vend one soda. Uh, super simple, $5 part plus the card reader. Um, now the cable, um, I actually purchased the wrong cable because originally I was intending to use it on an MDB machine. Um, NIAX does sell pulse cables, but um, they were out of stock and they said it was gonna take over a week to get one. So what I did is I just cut the cable and I followed a pinout, which is readily available online. 
and I changed where the pins are, um, you shouldn't have to do that. You should just be able to order a pulse cable and I'll detail all that in um, uh, other parts of this video. So there you go. The back door or uh, the system for NIAX, uh, when you get your login, when you receive your device, you'll be able to uh, edit your machine. So that's what I've done. I've uh, gone into edit and you have all these options, dashboard, general, etc., etc. If you go to attributes, that's the first thing you want to do uh, to set this whole thing up for Pulse. So you can go to the group and instead of all, you want to go down to Pulse CC Talk. So here's some of the things that I have selected and I'll show you exactly what I have done. But you have all these options for configuring it. So this is how you're going to first get the ability to edit these attributes. Um, so I've done that go to general and so now under general you'll have the option for the pulse stuff so here's what I have in so I have credit per pulse is a hundred cents so one dollar um, the timeout so I have one line connected so pulse line number one is where the signal is going to be sent through um, you can have multiple different machines hooked up and they can select, say, a different dryer or washer or whatever. But this is, we're going to keep it simple. One, a number of pulses sent. So in our case, we just need one pulse sent. So I just got one. Um, after the fact, it's going to hold for three seconds. Um, I have it set to go for one second. So time in milliseconds is going to pulse for one second. Give the relay enough time to click complete the circuit and close, um, no invert, don't worry about that. Um, and then I have a message too, so a little custom message says also is our $1 because it's a single price machine, so that is applicable. And um, I have the Pulse one of communication disabled, so all this stuff, whenever you're done editing, you'll go to restart device, you should restart. All right, guys, so I'm going to show you how I did this. So I got some diagrams. <clears throat> and so this is the um, the connector for the DPOS touch. It looks like that. It's what goes into the back of the NIAX, and it's the pinout. So you only really need this if uh, <laughs> you're cutting an MDB cable like I was. But if you buy the, the pulse cable, it should already have these labeled and uh, you know you just plug it into the NIAX and then at the other end you have a bunch of cables sticking out and you're gonna have to connect them yourself but what, what I had to do was I had to cut it and because uh, it was originally an MDB cable and I redid where the pins were so that they were connected to the right things because I didn't have a pulse cable to start with so we're gonna look at this cable that's the first one of the ones we're gonna need that's pulse number one um, and then the only other ones that I used were the, these four, all the AC slash DC ends. So uh, I'm going to draw how I connect everything, but pulse one. Now the, the cable, when it's clicked into the machine or the NIAX is oriented in this direction. So the bottom, um, bottom left corner is pulse number one. And then the, uh, the, um, power source is coming in at the top, on the top row. And you'll notice that each um, positive and negative, they have two. So basically what I did was you have two little cables coming out for each um, direction, you know, positive, negative. And then I would connect the two little ones to one main wire. Um, so I'm just gonna draw out exactly where I connect everything. So we're gonna say that our power source right here now I used um, 12 volt DC. And all I did was I found, um, we got a basket of cables at the home. And uh, you know, I found one that was 12 volt DC. Uh, it was a transformer. Um, I cut it and with that came two cables. So I'm gonna draw my little box. Okay, so we got one cable and another cable. 
So we're gonna say this one is positive, this one is negative. So basically when you have a DC power source, that's all you're gonna have. You cut it and my cable was something like, it was something like this and I cut it and there were two just unlabeled cables. I had to use a multimeter to determine which was positive and which was negative. Um, so you may need to do that. Um, that's something that you'll just have to Google or YouTube. It's not really that hard. Um, all right, so we have our two negatives. So we'll take 26, which is negative. <laughs> it's kind of bad. We connected that here. And we also took 24 and pretty much did the same thing. So 24 and 26 were connected to negative. I'm gonna try and separate this. So we got 22. This uh, maybe I have a different color. Let me see. Yeah, I do. I'm gonna use a different color. So I connected the 22 and the 20 to the positive. So pretty straightforward, right? And then um, I'm gonna draw my little relay that I bought from Amazon. So here's the relay. And all that it is, you got three terminals over here. You got a positive, a negative, and a signal on one side. And then on the other side, you have normally open, calm, and normally closed. And uh, this is the $5 thing you can buy from Amazon. So then what we did is we connected the negative. Sorry, these colors make absolutely no sense. I'm just using whatever I got. All right, so I, I spliced all these together with the wire nut. So all these are together. And just use a different color. I'm gonna use a different color for the pulse. So pulse wire, I took and went into signal. Pretty easy. Those two in. And then, I don't know, just use another orange. Positive for positive. Take this and connect it to positive. Um, so in all of these connections, right, there's, I had three wires, but it depends how your pulse cable is going to come. Um, if I'm remembering correctly, the pulse cable from NIAX may or may not have two little tiny positives and then two little tiny negatives. I don't know. Um, it's going to say um, they'll either have one or two. You just connect positive and negative um, to your source and then also to the relay. So positive and negative here. And the signal you know, is coming from your one pulse cable. So then on the other side, I have our diagram of the Jones plug. This is um, what most of the single price machines are using, and the thing is, this is the schematic for a free vent button. So the pins are, are numbered, and you can actually see this when you remove the plug. Um, it'll have the numbers right on there. Um, it's oriented in this direction, or it was for me, so um, the front of the machine was that way. I opened the coin door, and then the plug was in this orientation, so if that helps at all, but it should be labeled. Um, basically, if you remove the socket, um, so you unplug the coin mech and you were just installing a free vent button, you need three um, points of contact. So you have to bridge one and seven because that's going to be an AC connection, just AC power. Um, and then the connection between three and one when that connection is made, 
it triggers the then relay on the machine. So this is normally open, which means that when the button is not pushed, this connection is not complete. You push the button and now it's connected. Cool. So what we're gonna do is instead of a button, we're gonna use our relay to trigger that to happen. Now, when I installed it, I removed the coin mech. I put my wires in the sockets. I basically, um, I cut a wire or I stripped the wire. I pushed it in nice and smooth, bent the wire to the side. And what I did is in the top of the socket, um, the coin mech plug, the rubber, I kind of notched it so that the wire would fit nice and uh, flush inside, like so that the there wasn't a gap between the socket and the plug. So you can see that in the, the demonstration video, but that's what I did. I, so I shoved wire in there, wire in there, and we'll show you exactly where we connected that. So it really doesn't actually matter which one goes to which, but we bring this and we're gonna put it in the ones in the normally open and the other one, oh, I guess that should be a different color. Doing this with one hand. The other one goes right there to the com. So normally open and common. So whenever this relay is triggered, it basically is connecting these two wires together momentarily, which will activate the REN relay and uh, it'll allow you to dispense one soda. Um, all right. Thank you. Thank you for watching. Um, we're now going to look at the uh, the final product. All right, so there's the NIAX and the holes that I drilled. The wires come from the NIAX into the. There's a relay right there. And open up the coin door. Take a look back there. And I just zip tied all these wires and just made them all nice and neat. But there's the wires from the relay. They plug into the Jones plug right there, and you can see I notched the uh, the rubber. Um, housing around the Jones plug so that the wires sit flush and you can still have the coin mechanism plugged in so the coin mechanism and bill validator will still work and close that up just a second and there's the power cable so I ran the power cable um, back behind here and you can see I have an extension cord plugged into it so it's a completely separate power source and the extension cord runs uh, underneath and out the back um, so it's plugged into the wall and here we go here's the final product so there's the NIAX um, it's up and running you can see nothing vents um, right now everything's just normal nothing in the box All right going to do a uh, cash transaction here. So the price is set at $1. That's four quarters. All right, there we go. There it is. All right, so the coin mechanism is working. Now we're going to do the NIAX. Nothing's vending right now. Swipe the card. It's approved. It sends the pulse. Relay is triggered. So it vents. And it only vents once until someone pays again.